at DevOps Enterprise, we open up with three experience reports. But this year, we're going to bring you an expert talk because the next speaker validates so many of the decisions that you've heard of today and you'll hear throughout the next three days. One of the most impactful learning moments for me was taking a workshop at MIT in 2014, which tremendously influenced my thinking. I went to this class because it was taught by Dr. Steven Spear, who I already mentioned in my opening remarks. He is famous for many things, but he's probably most famous for writing one of the most downloaded Harvard Business Review papers of all time. In 1999, it was published as Decoding the DNA of the Toyota Production System. This was based in part on his doctoral dissertation that he did at the Harvard Business School. In support of that, he worked on the manufacturing plant floor of a Tier 1 Toyota supplier for six months. Since then, he's extended his work beyond just high repetition manufacturing to engine design at Pratt & Whitney, to the building of the safety culture at Alcoa, and how to make health care systems safe. Recently, he was part of a U.S. Navy initiative to create a high-velocity learning dynamic across all aspects of the enterprise. He has spoken at this conference three times, including that remarkable panel with Dr. Sidney Decker and Dr. Richard Cook. Steve is a person who introduced to me the term dynamic learning organizations, which is all about creating a culture of experimentation as opposed to a culture of compliance. So here is Steve, who will share one of the most remarkable historical examples of creating a rapid learning dynamic at enterprise scale. Thank you, Steve. June 1942 should have been a source of huge celebration for the Imperial Japan Navy. And why is that? Because December 1941 utterly stunk for the United States Navy. The Japanese Navy had attacked at Pearl Harbor, surprise attack, destroyed Battleship Row, and immediately after that, go on a wave of conquest through the Pacific. Guam, Bataan, Singapore, this place, that place. And uh, June 42, this was going to be the coup de grace. The Japanese Navy was going to sail out from Japan out to Midway Island, start bombarding the heck out of that island, lure the U.S. Navy out of uh, Pearl Harbor, and sneak attack them there and uh, destroy the remainder of the U.S. force. This time, the aircraft carriers, now that the battleships were um, still burning. Well, anyway, it didn't work out exactly that way for the Japanese. And in rather than June 42 being that momentous triumph, it actually turned to be pivotal. And after the defeat suffered at uh, Midway Island by the Japanese Navy, they couldn't wage a meaningful offensive for the remainder of the war. Now, that, that's not to say that it was easy going for the U.S. Navy, uh, Japan staged uh, a brutal, bloody, prolonged retreating defense, but it was retreating defense. And so you might ask yourself the question, so, you know, with these uh, great plans that were being cooked up and operationalized in June 1942, what went wrong and when did it go wrong? Now, uh, let's think about it. What's the Hollywood answer? Well, the Hollywood answer was in a movie recently, so we know what the Hollywood answer was. In uh, Late in the afternoon on the 4th of June, Commander Wayne McCloskey, flying his uh, airplane attack, came in, saw a break in the clouds, came through the clouds. As he's diving down, whoa, there's the Japanese flagship. He radios his compatriots to come and attack the same flagship, and he leads the attack, and it's decisive in the battle. Well, that's what Hollywood tells you. So here, here's the thing. On the left side of the screen, uh, these uh, two authors wrote this enormous book. It's a gigantic book, hundreds and hundreds of pages detailing the Battle of Midway from the Japanese perspective. And you know that if someone sits down and writes a book, which is three, four, 500 pages, and any bitty little bit of type, um, they're not going to reach the same conclusion as Hollywood. So then you start reading through the book and say, oh, you know, I wonder what they have to say. And in fact, at the almost end of the book, they say, hey, reader, you just plowed through all this dense detail. When do you think the Japanese lost the Battle of Midway? And so, you know, it's a trick question, right? It's like, it can't be possibly when uh, Commander McCloskey saw the flagship. It's got to be earlier. You start thinking, well, when could it be? Could it be at noontime? Nah, it's too obvious. Early in the morning, too obvious. I got it. It had to be late in May when the Japanese Navy was late and discombobulated, leaving the harbors around Tokyo. And maybe, I don't know, what do you see? If you get discombobulated, you get recombined, whatever. Get reorganized that they didn't get reorganized around Midway by the 4th of June, and that was their undoing. So anyway, having flipped through the, all the way to the beginning of the book, to go to the back of the book again, 
And the authors, it's kind of funny, right? They, they, they go from this very sort of dry prose to almost slapstick. They say, hey, reader, I bet you um, went all the way to the start of the book and found uh, May as uh, when the Japanese Navy lost this because they got discombobulated. And guess what? The Japanese Navy lost the Battle of Midway no later than 1929. And you're like, what the? Because 1929 is not even in the book. But here's the thing. If I, you know, my reaction to that book was 1929. What the? All right, let me offer another offer. Is that the Japanese Navy may have lost by 1929, but the U.S. Navy won by 1895. Now you're probably going, oh, what the? So anyway, let me explain that. In the late 1800s, the United States Navy was faced with huge, huge change, both strategic and technological. And as I start talking through this case, start thinking about all the strategic and technological changes we have in 2020. So you got your um, um, Internet of Things, you got your Industry 4.0, you got your G5, you got your AI, you got machine learning, got data mining, and uh, all that lumped together. I mean, how often do you see an article with the headline is basically, ah, throw your past away. Your history hasn't been written. You are gonna have to completely rethink not only what you do and how you do it. Well, anyway, that was a real problem for the U.S. Navy in about 1895. And I'll tell you why. Up through, up through the mid 1800s, the United States had a very continental focus. You know, you started off with uh, 13 diminutive weak colonies on the uh, Atlantic coast. But uh, you got the Louisiana Purchase, you got wet, westward expansion, you got Lewis and Clark finding finding that the other people knew it was there. They found it for themselves, the Pacific Ocean, on and on. But by 1900, just to scale this, by 1900 of the 50.